Hello, welcome to 28 Sports Show here on TV Sapiencia. It's that program where we get to talk to teenagers, we discuss issues that concern them because it's all about the teenagers. I am Oma, you're very sweet at on radio and TV, the teenagers, they get to call me Auntie Oma. And today on 28 Sports Show, we will have an amazing convo conversation because we have someone with us here. And Guacham, I love that name. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me all. Tell me all. Guacham. Guacham. <laughs> Guacham Chidiogo is a teens coach. She's also um, the convener of teens and twenties listening ear. And she has been telling me, I mean, interesting things about all that's been happening on the WhatsApp uh, platform. It's actually a WhatsApp platform. Yes. So, but tell us, um, in your course of coaching teenagers, how has it been? Then you tell us more about the uh, teens and twenties listening ears. Okay, it's 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 been an amazing journey, mm. and you know, mentoring teens for over a decade now. That's oh, over ten years. Yes, wow. yes, actually, I've come to realize that these teenagers have a lot to say. Yeah, sure. They are going through a lot. Even the ones that we think that have it all together. I mean the ones that are academically okay and we think, you know, but they have a lot to say and they are full of potentials. Yeah. Speaking to them, I know they are full of potentials, but you see, they have challenges too. And because they are not able to express these challenges freely because they are afraid of being judged. Okay. They are afraid of, you know, we have this thing about feeling they are afraid of failing so they are holding back you know they are holding back and not playing full out you know so but in the course of mentoring them i by the grace of god the group teens and 20s listening here is it's out of my passion okay you know i'll tell you a quick story oh, okay in 2018 when i was teaching mm. in a school mm. A day came around 7.45 in the morning. We're having our assembly. A father comes into school, drags his son by the waist to the school, and he went straight to the principal's office. And after a while, the principal sent for me. He was in JSS3, and I was a form teacher. Mm -hmm. So he called me. I entered the, to the principal's office, and the father was seated. You know, he looked pained. You know, and the boy, he just stood, you know, he just stood, his shirts were undone, he looked wreck like he had been in a fight. And then the principal goes ahead to tell me, he said, this boy has been stealing from the father, disobedient to the father, and what broke the camel's back, what made him come that morning was that he broke his safe and took away all of his money. So before I could say anything, the principal drags him by the waist and takes him out to the assembly ground, you know, and right there in front of the whole students and teachers, uh, told them what he had done and flogged him. Oh my, I've never had, I've never seen anybody flogged that much in my entire life. But I noticed something while he was being flogged. He just stood motionless, you know. He, you know, he, they always have this big boy facade that like, they were not feeling the pain. But he just stood and, you know, the students murmured and the teachers, you know, raised their shoulders up and down in disgust. And after that uh, was over, during the break period, there's this room, there's this empty room in the school. I used to stay there to write my notes or to just meditate, to just take some time out. I sent for someone to call him and when he came, when he walked into the room, you know, he had this attitude. You just go ahead and say whatever you want to say. I know how you adults advise. Just tell me how I've been bad, how I'll go to hell, how I've been disobedient to my father and how I shouldn't do all that and all that. And I asked him to sit down. And when he sat down, he threw his shoulders back, brought out his leg forward. You know, he had that, I'm ready for you. Just say, let hey. me go. But by the help of the Holy Spirit, I looked at him and I asked him, I said, I feel you are angry and you are sad. I, I want to know why. I want to know what's going on. And that was it. You know, suddenly this big boy, he looked at me like she caught me. And I looked at him, and in that moment, tears started welling up his eyes, wow. and, 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 and he cried. Wow. And I, I, was, I looked at him, and when he looked up at me, the first thing he told me, oh my, I never forget it. He said, what did my mother ever do to him that he would divorce her? Now, I thought the problem we're dealing with is 
stealing and theft wow. and stubbornness. But he wow. said, what did my mother ever do to him? Now, I had been his teacher for three terms and I didn't know that he, his parents were going through a rough divorce. Wow. Now, teenagers, children, generally, when they can't speak, they act. Oh. Yes. So, even though this is not a reason why he should steal and do all manner of things, but that day was as if a light bulb switched on on me. Mm. The parents, they were going through a lot. None of the teachers knew, not the principal. And he said, since he got married to this woman, he has not been listening to anything I say. So, you see, it, it, he's going through, this is a child Ooh, going through pain yeah. of divorce that needs therapy, that needs counsel. But we were handling the effects. And that is, goes back to that book I was telling you about, Bullets Before Band-Aid. The cause of that was, that is feedback. He was going through something and there was no one. And he was trying to, you know, teenagers, their emotions, they are not yet, you know, they're trying to build. So nobody to talk to is trying to do everything he could to get the father's attention. Oh, wow. So wow. from that day, it, it was as if a light bulb switched on me. I started, I, I started asking questions. How can I? Mm. Because I was teaching this boy and I didn't know he was going through that. Mm. So that was what brought about teens and twenties listening ears. Okay. You don't have to go through anything alone. Mm. There, it's an online uh, WhatsApp group. I offer uh, counsel, uh, you know, mentorship. And when I've seen that your case is beyond me, mm. I have therapists. Mm. You know, you, like on Friday we had our Yana night. You, you see teenagers send messages. That, are, that will give you goosebumps. Mm. Someone said, I've been addicted, you know, to gambling. I am, I just got into the university, but now I'm, I'm on the depth of close to a tone of a hundred thousand naira. And, and whenever I, I go into this depth, I, I resort to masturbation, another addiction. We are not listening. We are not listening. The parents, the society, the teachers, we are not listening. We have just been caught up in our, you know, high and mighty. We are up there, you are here. You should listen to everything I say. Teenagers need to be heard. They need to be listened to. They need to be counseled. They need to know that it's okay, that you don't have to go through anything. So that's the reason why that group is there. Wow, amazing, beautiful. Okay, let's look at self-esteem. How can... You know, because we found out that, um, I have found out that a lot of teenagers go through low self-esteem. Mm. And when this low self-esteem is not properly taken care of, it goes with them into adulthood. Yes, exactly. And before you know it, that's why we have a lot of adults that have unusual outbursts of emotions. Exactly. You know, somebody finds it difficult to improve on him or herself and they get angry that another person is improving on themselves. Mm. You know, meanwhile, everybody has that level playing field to play absolutely you know absolutely. and it, it starts from teenage first of all what is self-esteem okay self-esteem is the perception you have of yourself okay like the price tag you attach to yourself the worth you attach to yourself self-esteem generally is how you view yourself mm. then from self-esteem we have low self-esteem okay and that is when you have negative perception mm. about yourself when you're always putting yourself down you magnify your weakness and you downplay your strength mm. now when i speak to teenagers um, on the flip side is high self-esteem but i like using the word healthy okay. self-esteem and the reason is this when you say high self-esteem, most teenagers tend to misunderstand that. And, you know, and they think that uh, uh, having this superiority, like I am above and every other person is beneath. And like there is no one like me. Nobody should. And you see those teenagers, when they, they don't understand the value of teamwork, you always see them, you know, try to, you know, believe that nobody has worth apart from them. That is actually uh, a symptom of low self-esteem. Self yeah. yeah. So a healthy self-esteem generally is accepting that you are worthy. Yeah. Just like every other person. Mm, mm. That there is something you have. Mm. Just like every other person. Mm. That you have strengths, but you also have weaknesses. Mm. Just like every other person. Mm. And, and you, you, you focus on your strengths and you fine tone your strength. Mm. And, and, and then you, you, you know, 
most teenagers have, have from my work with them have noticed that low self-esteem actually because they I don't know how to put it. Because they are they, they, they strength, they don't even know what their strengths are. Mm. So they believe that if I can just play football, I'm talented. Yeah. They, these things that we see as core talent, football, singing, you know, acting, speaking. But there are plenty of other things that a teenager can be good at. When you speak to these young children, you see that they have potentials. Most of them are good with organizing. Most mm. of them are creatives. You, you stay with them and they can bring up in five seconds, they can bring up an idea. Mm. You know, in teens and twenties listening ears, we have one. He designs our flyers. Wow. You, you know, they are creative if we give them the opportunity to. Okay, okay, beautiful. Now, how can a teenager build self-esteem become bold you know seeing that okay okay before we come to that what are the causes of low self-esteem what causes low self-esteem hmm. low self-esteem i think one of the major causes of low self-esteem i i grouped them under an umbrella okay. i call them messages okay and these are messages from parents okay from teachers okay from the society okay and negative self messages now from parents in the home, that is where the first place a child's self-esteem is built. Yeah. So when you have a teenager that is staying in an abusive home where he or she is abused verbally, mm. you, why can't you do anything right? Are you stupid or something? You cannot just do anything right. You are not enough. And most times as parents, we, there are words we speak. And there are words that are unspoken, but it, they carry the same weight. When you make your child feel like he is not enough, I mean, you have to do something. I mean, as as a parent, to as a mother, you know, my two, my two year old son, you know, most times I notice that when he does something right, you know, come on, give me high five, and he's happy, you know, he's happy. So we even grow up thinking that we have to do something to make our parents happy. They, they are not just okay with who we are. We have to do something. So you have adults trying so hard to please people. Now they are no longer teenagers, but these things, because we ignore them, does not make them go away. So negative messages from parents, then from teachers. Teachers are meant to help students build their esteem. True. I heard the story of Steve Harvey. He said the teacher, when he was 10 years old, he said the teacher asked them to write something, what you are going to be in the future. And he said he wrote, I want to be on TV, a 10 year old. And when the teacher collected the, the paper from every other person, she saved her, his paper for the last. Wow. She wanted to humiliate him. Wow. You know, he read out, you know, this one said he wanted to be a doctor. Everyone clapped. This one wanted to be a, a lawyer. Everyone clapped. But when he got to his boy, he said he, 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 she read his paper. He said, come on. And this boy had a severe stuttering problem. He stammers. And the teacher knew. Steve Harvey. Yes, Steve Harvey. The Steve Harvey. Yeah. You know, the, the teacher said, you wrote you want to be on TV. He said, yes. And I looked at him and said, who on your family has ever been on TV? And because he stammers, he, he was trying to say something. He said, I, 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 who on your neighborhood has ever been on TV? I, 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 who do you ever know that has ever been on TV? I, 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 I. Look at you. You cannot even talk. And you say you want to be on TV. You will never be on TV. Wow. A 10-year-old from a teacher. You get that? So he turned that right. He is the very few percentage of the students that go through that. But now, look at the miracle. Now, he said when the teacher was alive, he sent her a television every Christmas so that she could watch him on TV. Wow. You know, where we don't believe in ourselves, and he goes on to say, if you have low self-esteem and you get to your adult stage and you become a teacher, you also have a tendency because hurt people, hurt people. Maybe yeah. no one believed in you. Mm. That is why it's necessary to handle this thing so that we don't we don't push it to our children and the students that god has placed in our care to take care of true, from true. the teachers then the third one is from the society we live in a society where we have painted uh unrealistic, unrealistic 
beauty standards. I don't know who brings these standards where you have to, you know, there is this uh, uh, magnifying mm. this um, figure, eight figure, this uh, hourglass figure. And, and, and you see teenagers, they see these things and you see celebrities go through surgeries uh, and deadly uh, surgeries, uh, uh, life threatening surgeries. And we've seen, we've heard uh, children dying, people dying as a result of these surgeries just so that they could look a certain way. I mean, who now tells these teenagers Teenagers, that for these people, most of them are doing it for the attention. Most of them are doing it for the money. Yeah. I had a, 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 this guy said, I've forgotten. His, he said, social media is fake. And I'm okay with it because the money is real. So, so for some of these celebrities, to them is the business. But who now tells these teenagers that these things are not real? Who now tells these teenagers that there is they that don't have make to make believe? Yes, that they don't have to. That th these things are just facades and and things that are just formulated. And then you go down to AI images. You see, ah. photo lab me. You look at people and people are just so perfect. I mean that that one is that one is just <laughs> that one is just the that one is just the. I mean I don't even know how to explain that one. You, you know people there is this we paint this picture of perfection. You know you see those images there are no sports so a teenager came to me one time and she said Auntie Chidiogo, I want to ask you something now she is an orphan but she's staying with her aunt so she said is it bad for me to use my money to buy some cream and I said what is the problem don't you have cream in your house she said we do but it's Vaseline I said okay Okay, because from working with teenagers, I've learned that you have to listen so that they, you can actually know the angle they are coming from. I said, okay, okay, so this cream you want to buy, what's the name? What, why do you want to? She said, they said, now the word is they, said that you will help to tone my skin 13 years. Hi. You know, so these are standards that as a society we've placed and teenagers, they, they, they don't know how to, they don't know that these things, are, most of them are not real. You know, mm, mm. and then another major cause of self-esteem is comparison. When a teenager begins to compare, oh, she has that, they have that, I want that, and and having comparison, uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin said, is the is the thief of all joy yeah. because you'd never be happy. Mm. You, you, you will look at some, you, someone, I, I want her eyes, I want her nose, I want her shape, I want her legs. Why is my leg like this? Why is my hands like this? You know, so comparison is another major cause of low self-esteem. So teenagers should learn to be okay with who they are, the body that God has given them. And that is why one of the major uh, uh, ways to solve low self-esteem yeah. is gratitude. Yeah. Because when you begin to feel grateful for what you have, oh, my eyes, I, I know I have this kind of eye, but my eye, I can't see. I can talk. This is my legs. I can walk with it. I don't know. Have you heard that medical condition where people are not able to defecate? It's, it's deadly. They have to go through surgery, some kind of surgery. I mean, these things that we take ordinarily, that we are not grateful for, it's, it's, it's huge. Mm -hmm. So these are... Yeah, you were, well, uh, because I wanted to start asking you, what can a teenagers do? What can we do? Because you talk about teenagers, you talk about parents, you talk about the society. Mm. What, can, what can we do? First of all, what can a teenager do? You've talked about gratitude. Yes, what absolutely. other things can they do to build self-confidence, boldness, have a healthy self-esteem? Because when someone has a healthy self-esteem, the yeah. person progresses. Exactly. But when someone does not have healthy self-esteem, there is nothing you do around that person that will be okay. Exactly. And I've come to realize that sometimes when people are overly critical of others, it's not about those people they are critical it's of. About it's about them. It's about them. Mm. It's about them. Absolutely. So how can we help these teenagers to become effective adults? Adults that can actually look at other adults and say, yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate what God has given you. I appreciate myself. Mm -hmm. You know, how can we build teenagers that will have high, I mean, healthy self-esteem, high self-confidence, yes. have confidence in themselves? Mm. boldness what can we do okay i think mm. for the teenager what to do to have a healthy self-esteem is understanding it has to you have to get to that point where you understand that you have value okay it's not about putting on a mask that is why i don't like the word boost 
you don't boost a low service state, especially the one that is at the zero level. Because I, I was there. It took me a year and six months to come out of that shackle. So if you say boost, it's like okay, someone feeling sad because someone broke up with her. And the person just goes to shop right and you know, he's trying to, you know, and you see them, they're trying to, I'm okay, I'm fine, you know, buy things. You are sad. <laughs> we need, in, 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 when I teach teenagers, we, there's what we call emotion mastery. You need to understand what you are feeling at the moment. Look, I am sad. And this is why. So a teenager needs to become self aware. When you are self aware, you begin to notice those thoughts as they come. And suddenly something happens and you say to yourself, I'm so dumb, I'm not so stupid. And you stop and say, hold on right there. I am not stupid. I may have made a mistake, but I am not stupid. I may have fallen, I may have failed, but I'm not a failure. These things, just, we begin to differentiate what we do from who we are. Yeah. Because self-esteem is basically that at your core, you are valuable. At your core, your very self, you have, so you become self-aware, you uh, notice those automated negative thoughts. They call them, we call them ANT. Mm. So when they come, you pause at them. And then the second thing you need to do is to replace messages with messages. Nature abhors vacuum. Mm. So when you are, you've noted these thoughts that pull you down, you have to find thoughts to replace them. Mm. Okay, so when the thought of I'm stupid comes, you, you, you stand up to yourself. I don't know if you've had that situation whereby you have to talk to yourself. Okay, let me tell you a quick story. I was about launching my free ebook, Bullets Before Band Aid. Four days to the book launch, I was in the kitchen. I was watching play, and then suddenly something comes, a thought comes. You are not ready. You are not ready for this. I mean, wait, wait, wait. Once you publish, a lot of people will know about your story and, and, and this, 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 that. Just push it to next year. You know, push it to next year. Do you know that I had to literally, I, I don't mean say it in my mind. I, stu I walked out of my kitchen into my, my sitting room. I said, no, I am ready. I am enough. This thought is not from God. You can't pull me down. I cannot stay in the shadows. I can't keep staying under. You can't stop me. I am going to do it anyway. So I do it afraid. If you wait for a time where you will not feel so good, you will never be ready. You will never be ready. So you need to identify those thoughts and replace them with another thought. I said, I am bold. God has put something in me. I have a voice. My voice will suit the world. The nations will hear me. I can't be in the kitchen. I can't be. I cannot tolerate this thought. Guess what happened? It went away. Because that is what it has been. Emptiness, nothingness that has held teenagers bound from coming out to be who God has designed them to be. And you write something and, and, and the thoughts will come. And say, what, what is this thing you are writing? You, you, how can you be an author like this? And the teenager will just squeeze the paper, put it inside us. Being. Some of them are so creative. They have ideas. They have things, but low self-esteem. And, and they now carry the paper to their teacher and the teacher will say, hey, you, <laughs> you want to be an author? The teacher that you are asking, is she an author? Yeah. So you get that. So yeah, yeah. becoming self-aware of these thoughts, replacing them with empowering messages and being grateful. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I think, um, <laughs> my goodness, I think you've just said it all. Quickly, what can parents do and what can society do to oh. help build uh, a healthy, uh, a teenager with a healthy self-esteem? One, one minute each, mm. please. If you're a parent, you need to hear me. Mm. The first thing I need you to do is to don't speak words of death. Speak life to your children. Okay. Words are powerful. Yeah. Your words carry power. Mm. And when you speak that to your child, your child takes it in fully. The child sinks those words in. Get knowledge. Mm. Parenting in other centuries, the way they raised you, is not the same. If you're raising <laughs> a Gen Z, if you're raising a teenager in this age, then you need a level, another level of knowledge. Another, the Bible said that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of their time. So you need wisdom plus knowledge. So go out, read books, go to seminars. And when you do, make sure you take your teenager with you. Last time, Oma, you had a program, yeah. September, mm. Teens Time Out with Oma. Mm. You brought in... August. 
It was yeah. in a September. Was it? Early September. Oh, yeah, I remember yeah, I was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, you brought in experts. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uchefe Vokonko was there mm. to speak to them about sexuality, sexual education. Uh, and Pastor Mike was there to speak to them about their career. Mm. And there were many experts you brought in. And you talked on digital security. And these are knowledge that teenagers should be armed with so that they know what they are going to face in the world. Yeah. Then another thing, pray for your children. And I don't mean pray for them in your closet. Call them by their name. You are a blessing. You are a gift to us. You are a gift from God to the nation. You have a voice. The world will hear your voice. You will bring solutions. You will not be part. You are a creative. You are a light. And you will shine. If you keep empowering them with these words, you may make mistakes, okay, but you are not a mistake. God is intentional about bringing you here. There is no child, there is no teenager that you will tell that to that will not come out powerful. Wow. Wow. And then to the society, it's about all of us. Every single teenager, it's, uh, an adage says it takes a community to raise a child. So it's not just for the parents. As, 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 as people, as teachers, as brothers, as sisters, and uncles to teenagers, we need to pay attention. Sometimes we should drop our phones. Sometimes pay attention. Pay attention to the cues they give. Pay attention to their spoken words. They want to speak. But who is listening? Thank you. Oh. My goodness, I didn't even feel like I don't feel like I don't feel like I don't feel like closing this program. My goodness. My goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just like your name. Guachamo. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are definitely going to have you again on this program. Thank like you. Like you're going to be here again to talk about because you have a lot inside of you. Thank and you. we need to tap into the wealth <laughs> of experience, the knowledge you have. Because every teenager definitely needs to hear from you. Every parent needs to hear what you have inside of you. Thank you so thank much. You. I should be saying thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Oma. Thank you, Oma. My goodness. That was Guacham <laughs> Chidiogo. Ah. Uh, Teens and twenties listening ears, That's right? Yes, yes. I will put up your this I've told you to send it to me so I can post it on my Facebook so that anybody that wants to follow you can actually follow you and the teenagers that wants to um to be mentored by you can as well be mentored by you. Thank you so much for joining us today. You, we look forward to having you yet again on Twenty Spot Show. I mean, you've heard from her, you've seen it all. Oh my goodness, she's going to be here another time. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank we you. look forward to having you again on 28 Spot Show. From me, Omar, you're very sweet on radio and TV. It is.